Good morning, this is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. A majority of lawmakers on the House Select Committee on Investigation have decided to not recommend the impeachment of South Dakota Attorney General Jason Roundsburg. Following the meeting at the South Dakota State Capitol, we spoke with Joe Beaver's cousin. The Attorney General was behind the wheel of the car that struck and killed Beaver in 2020. It was a straight party line vote with the Republicans voting uh, against impeachment and the two Democrats voting for impeachment. I was very disappointed. I, I thought we would for sure get a, a couple of the Republicans to, to go along with the Democrats, but that was not the case. Speaker of the House and Chair of the House Select Committee on Investigation, Spencer Gosh, says representatives will gather on April 12th. Any pair of representatives can bring forward articles of impeachment. Tribal leaders, city leaders, and businesses are speaking out following recent comments made by a Rapid City hotel on social media. NDN Collective also plans to ask a judge for an injunction against Grand Gateway to keep it from violating civil rights. The organization will be boycotting the business and others owned by the Yuri family. And then, of course, we're just going to continue to work on long-term solutions to address racism in our community. Kelloland News reached out to one of the owners of Grand Gateway Hotel, who says he will not be speaking at this time. New this morning, the American Red Cross is helping a Rapid City family after a fire damaged their home in the northern part of the city. The Rapid City Fire Department says crews were called to the home in the 700 block of Packer Place just after 6.30 last night. Firefighters arriving on scene found flames coming from the home. The family and firefighters weren't hurt. However, six dogs died in the fire. A unit called the Painted County Cascade was called in to help fill air tanks. Turning to weather now with meteorologist Scott Munn. Some rain, maybe some snow on the way to Kelloland, Scott. Yeah, any way you look at it, some much needed precipitation is on the way. And it will be another windy day, imagine that. Uh, strong north winds today across western South Dakota. Once that happens, temperatures will start to fall. We'll go at south to southeast winds in central and eastern Kelloland. We'll hold off on our precipitation chances until late this afternoon into the evening in eastern Kelloland. Let's go ahead and show you our forecast for today with a high of 50 in Sioux Falls. Southeast winds 15 to 30. Forecast into northeastern South Dakota. Aberdeen's high at 51. We'll have a strong southerly wind come in at least 15 to 30. Central South Dakota, 55 in Pier. And as we do check our forecast in western Kelloland, Rapid City will have a high temperature of 58 early. And then once winds become north, temperatures will fall. And we'll watch for growing chances of rain or snow in western South Dakota. More details on your Kelloland Live Doppler forecast coming up. Thank you, Scott. Voters can now get a head start on casting their ballot in the Sioux Falls City election. Absentee voting started yesterday. Voters will be deciding the fate of the mayoral race, four city council contests, and a pair of ballot questions. In person, early voting is taking place at the Minnehaha County Administration Building. If you're planning on using a mail-in ballot, you won't want to waste any time because Election Day is April 12th. Next week, all three mayoral candidates will join us in our studio to answer your questions. The debate with incumbent Paul Tenhaken and challengers Sneeza Islam and David Zakaitis will begin at 8 o'clock Central Time on Kello TV. If there's a question you'd like to ask the candidates, all you need to do is send an email to candidatequestions at kelloland.com. You can also shoot a video of yourself asking the question, and you could even end up being part of the broadcast. A mammoth tooth was discovered in northwest Iowa earlier this month. What was an average day at the construction site for Justin Blawick became unforgettable when he discovered the mammoth tooth in the dirt. It dates back over 20,000 years. I was excited and shocked and I kind of was excited to go tell my little boy he's six and he just loves dinosaurs and stuff. So The mammoth tooth is now being put on display at the town's museum for the community to enjoy. A new restaurant is coming to downtown Sioux Falls. Wagyu Burger will take over the Ferns and Taproom Kitchen. It will open to the public on Friday at 3 p.m. The menu will feature burgers, chislick, and other comfort foods. The new partnership was teased during the St. Patrick's Day Parade with a pop-up kitchen. South Dakota State women's basketball getting set for another home game at Frost Arena in Brookings. The Jackrabbits beat Alabama on Sunday, earning a spot in the WNIT semifinals. On Thursday, the Jackrabbits welcome UCLA to Brookings.
Last time the team saw each other was in November when SDSU won by 10. General admission tickets are available online. You can find a link under our story right here on Killaland.com. That's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Scott Munn. Scott? All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, mostly cloudy skies. That's what we have going in our forecast for today. With developing rain and snow in western South Dakota, something else that may develop, thunderstorms in the eastern Kelloland late this afternoon, heading into the early part of the evening. You see them trying to set up near Pier, Aberdeen, and Huron. And then we'll have another area in the southeastern South Dakota from Marshall, Brookings, Mitchell, and to the east. And if you're caught underneath one of those thunderstorms, you may pick up around a quarter inch of uh, rainfall. And then as that cold air comes in behind the system, things switch on over to snow for tomorrow. And we may see an inch or two of accumulation, higher totals there in the Minnesota, maybe extreme northeastern South Dakota. Chance of severe weather to our southeast, but that marginal risk does uh, a nudge in the parts of northwestern Iowa. Here's our snowfall forecast. Highest amounts, of course, found into the hills. They may see around four to possibly eight, eight inches as we are looking at winter weather advisory that goes in effect at three o'clock this afternoon for the hills of western South Dakota. And it will be windy. Strong north winds in the western Kettleland, southerly winds in central and eastern Kettleland. Temperatures today in the 40s and 50s or maybe a couple of areas that hit 60 in the plains of western South Dakota. 20s and 30s for overnight lows tonight and then tomorrow just a cold day with our snow showers. We'll have temperatures in the 30s and 40s. You can check the details of your seven day forecast while you're here online. Have a great day.